A new government program is reportedly in the works to prevent ransomware attacks ahead of the 2020 election. A division of the Department of Homeland Security is planning to focus on protecting voter registration databases. Russian hackers compromised those systems during the 2016 election. Reuters reports intelligence officials have expressed concern foreign hackers will target databases again in an attempt to, quote, manipulate, disrupt, or destroy the data. Ransomware attacks recently crippled some local governments across the U.S. Just over a week ago, 22 municipalities in Texas were compromised. Infected computer systems will stay locked until the ransom is paid. Christopher Bing joins me now. He's a cybersecurity reporter for Reuters. Chris, thanks very much for being with us. This program is being led by the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, a division of the Department of Homeland Security. What will it aim to do? This program is really going to try and reach out to state election officials and provide them with educational material, uh, advice. They'll also provide vulnerability scanning to check how weak the computer defenses are within these state systems. And the whole motive is to try and prevent a catastrophic cyber attack against the election in 2020. Well, specifically, Chris, which databases within our election system could be targeted and what kind of damage can ransomware attacks cause? The type of systems that are of most concern uh, that I've heard about recently are these voter registration databases. These are systems that are used to validate the uh, eligibility of uh, voters. So when a voter goes to the polling station, this will help check their identity to make sure that the person voting that day is in fact who they say they are. The type of attack that the government is concerned about is one where these systems are not accessible and it will cause delays at the voting booth or cause people to not be able to vote that day because the lines are so long. Well, why are state and county government databases more susceptible to ransomware attacks? What we saw in 2016 was that Russian hackers weren't necessarily able to get into the voting machines themselves, but they were able to get into these voter registration databases that I'm describing, which are regularly connected to the internet because they need to be updated with information that's changing for voters, such as their address or their last name through marriage. In that incident, information was just being collected by the hackers. But feasibly, what could occur is the databases could be locked down, some of the data could be manipulated or destroyed, and that would really cause a problem for poll workers that day as they try and get people to vote. Well, in the event that a hacker still manages to infect a system with ransomware, what happens then? At that point, the county is going to have to make a decision or the state. Are they going to pay the ransom that the hacker is demanding to unencrypt their files and let them regain access to the computer? Or are they going to work with a private sector firm, law enforcement, and the government more broadly to try and regain access? The real concern here, the issue that could occur on, on the day, is that they're not going to have time to make a decision. They're going to have to quickly regain access so that people can vote. Every hour that passes by that people aren't able to vote or that the lines become longer is ultimately going to affect the result of the election. So, you know, it can really become a very difficult situation. Well, state election officials tell you that they have improved their cybersecurity defenses since 2016. Has it been enough? What more needs to be done? States are trying. I think at the end of the day, different states are going to have a different amount of resources to support their different cybersecurity efforts and to make the election more secure. States like California and Vermont, wealthier states, have a track record of, and they've spoken in the press about some of these different cybersecurity initiatives that they've taken on. But it's going to be a different level across the United States. And it's really hard to tell how prepared individual counties are uh, until the day. So we're going to really find out how well everyone is prepared when the time comes. All right, Christopher Bing. Chris, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.